Nice to see you all. Um, thanks for being here. I'm Kevin. Um, I'm a developer educator um, based in um, Downpatrick now. Um, for a long time, I was based in England, but I am now based in Downpatrick, which is lovely. Um, balmy from negative five degrees yesterday morning. So um, yeah, it's great. Um, but um, I want to talk to you a little bit about live coding. Um, now, live coding is something that um, I, I, I how do, why am I um, in any way um, qualified to be able to talk about it? Well, I just enjoy it. Um, I've seen, seen it in action in a few places, and I thought it would be fun to share it. Um, I pitched it to, um, to Chris and thought he would say, nah, um, but he said yes. So here we are. Um, we get to talk about live coding. So, so um, I'm Kevin, do learning on most places on the internet, on Twitter and um, other places as well. So what is uh, live coding? Let me just make sure I'm sharing my sound as well. Cool. Um, so live coding is, um, unsurprisingly, um, something that is done live. Um, it kind of started in the, um, it, it's kind of started in the um, sort of early 2000s um, and, and, and developed onward from then. It became kind of a big kind of music and visual community. Um, you had um, people who are, are in person, it's live, um, it's um, improvised normally, although people will often have um, bits of code that they are referring back to and referencing. You see here that the code is being sort of projected onto the walls around the actual venue as things are going on. So you can kind of follow along with the code as the audio and the visuals are being, being evolved. Sometimes both the audio and the visual will be being generated by code. In this instance, that both these ladies are developing, both these performers are one doing the audio and one's doing the visual um, but practitioners don't really like to define what it is too closely it's that kind of one of those artist things of yeah well if we define it too closely then um then we can, we can be put too easily into a box but for me it, it's often quite electronic um i'm talking a bit louder i hope i'll turn this see if i can turn this down a bit sorry it's often a bit um if, I, if you can tell me if the um, if the balance is off too much, um, it's often um, electronic um, because we're we're generating these um, these sounds. We can um, pull in other other sounds, other kind of anything you've done with like loop pedals, um, where maybe you're feeding the sound through one and through to another. We can manage that digitally, both for the um, auditory experience and for the um, for the visual experience as well, um, which is which is really cool. Thanks. Um, the um, so you can kind of see like there's the distortion. It sort of builds up over time, and we can see uh, the you know the performers are, um, are are demonstrating their code as they're going. And um, one of the kind of things when when you're when you get to experience it live is that you know, bugs happen in code, and often people will cheer when it goes wrong. It's a kind of yeah, that's okay, you keep going. It's that sort of sacrifices to the demo gods. It sometimes feels like we have to make, but actually in a live coding environment environment it's kind of known that it stuff just might go wrong um there's times when um where like you might take the headphones off entirely or, or like, like cover your ears because actually what you're getting is less signal and, and more noise as it kind of explores all the way through it um and there, there are lots of different styles and lots of different ways to be able to do it. You know, so um, you might take a piece of music and then from that music, just try to be inspired by what's going on or or actually just play with um, some images, play with them, um, piping them through different kinds of modulators and, and explore them in, in lots and lots of different ways. Um, there are academic music departments that are um, bringing this into their, they have this as part of their curriculum now. Um, and they're absolute novices like me who just mess around um, and have a go on it. Um, now, I I'm, I'm, don't want to, I'm, I'm going to explain a few, we're going to see a few bit, few bit more bits of people as they, as they perform and, and sort of explore um, what's going on here. Um, and, and some of it is kind of physical, those kind of large digital devices that you're plugging into and actually wiring and moving things around, playing with knobs. And, and some of it will be like in more informal spaces. And some of it might be, um, you know, um, as part of a bigger and broader performance 
performance piece. You know, um, I've seen people incorporate dance and movement and other artworks into their um, live coding experiences. You can see the live coders are here. We have this harpist um, playing um, playing an electric harp, which is then being modulated by code as it's coming through, and the light shows also being controlled by live coding. Um, and you can have it in huge venues, like uh, you know where the live coder might just be doing the um, visuals for say a traditional concert and not actually people maybe don't know that it's live coding going on um, and it's just sort of grad, grad just being part of that, that that live experience there are tons of different languages and um, there are tons of different places that you could use live coding. Um, if you um, like a bit of closure, so you really love your parentheses, um, then there's um, Afterglow, which is really great for light controls and, and, and various bits and pieces like that. Um, if you want to learn a programming language that just is for live coding, there are lots of those available as well. Um, often the motivation around that is to create an experience that um, is under understandable for artists. There's almost a fear for some that, oh, we need to bring a programming language that's expressive for a particular type of art form or particular music. And until so we create, they create, there's a language created around that. Um, and then um, you, you can you can have experiences which are just auditory and languages that are just focused on the sound and languages that are just focused on um, on the visuals as well. Um, I played around with this Gibber one, Gibber.gc. I'm oh, sorry, I meant to drop this um, link into... Uh, ah gone um i i think if i give you this link you can scroll around here as well um but i could be wrong because it might be a different link but um it's linked to this mirror board i played around with this gibber.mc um um and one of the problem one of the um one of the things was I had to cover my ears afterwards because it just got to be really noisy. Um, and um, so, so do be if you are playing with it and you do do play with this, do be prepared either to take your headphones off um, or to turn your volume all the way down. Um, I was I was in a meeting um, and was just playing around with this when I should have been paying attention and just to start blasting through my ears. And so, so yeah, so don't do that. Um, is what is what I would recommend. Um, but I'm often, uh, most of my teachings are on JavaScript and this is a JavaScript meetup. And so I wanted to talk about a, a live coding environment that's, that's written in JavaScript and has a JavaScript-like syntax as we explore it. And, and it's called Hydra. Um, it's developed by an artist um, and developer called Olivia Jack. And she was inspired, and it's mostly visual. And she was inspired by this kind of setup, which which when I saw the this picture, it just like it made, me, it made me just really geek out. It looks amazing. So you've got like your she's overlapping sort of different oscillating signals through these different machines, and some of them are going faster, and some of them are going slower. And and by interacting and 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 merging them together, you get some sort of amazing visual experience to to kind of explore in the background. So this was kind of her inspiration. Um, about it's called Hydra, um, and one of the things that is great about it is um, oh, is the um, the funk. The when you arrive on the website, um, let's get rid of my previous code. When you arrive on the website, the first thing you get this look, this pop up, um, you know, which is you know pretty nice, and I you can get it's multilingual, which is great. Um, uh, thinking back to Emma's talk last night, I'm, I don't know about the accessibility of this piece, but we'll, um, I don't know. I haven't tabbed through it, but it's interesting. I, I was interested to think about that. But it has this list of Hydra functions, which um, and this is all the things that it's kind that kind of make it. You have sources. Um, you've got geometries, colors. You can blend stuff together. So that's like the machines that we saw that you can kind of blend different signals together. We can tweak things up and tweak things down. We get external sources, and we can kind of do do other bits and pieces as well. And for each of these, as you click on them, um, you get this kind of live code um, sample and an output that you can fiddle with. And I think like that really, um, for me, that really exemplifies what live coding is kind of all about. It's not about um, like, it's almost not, it's definitely not about me sitting teaching. Um, this, I wouldn't put a workshop where I was sort of teaching a lot of it. It's kind of like, let's just put people in front of it and see what they do. So, 
as well as having this link out to documentation, once you close this window, you get um, everyone who arrives on this page, and this is hydra.ojac.xyz, um, will get a different example or one of like a huge library of examples. And if you want to swap examples, you can press this shuffle button on the top right. And, and, and the, the visualization in the background is absolutely being described and explained and, and defined by the code that's on here. And you can go away and you can sort of fiddle with the numbers and go, well, what happened if I change that to a thousand? And we press um, control shift um, enter to make to run the whole code block. I feel like that's flashing a bit more of that a thousand. I'm not really sure. Um, and if I want to keep the same code block, um, but with different numbers, I can press the dice. And all that will do is it will take the same code block, but it will um, just anywhere it has a number, it will randomly change the number. So you can kind of get some idea about what's going on. So in a kind of like jumping through some of these, whoa, that's crazy. But jumping through some of these examples is really, um, quite quite fun and quite inspirational for me to go. Oh, that's really cool and that's pretty and and, and that's okay. So um, I thought I could. Um, you can have this up and you can be playing around on this. And I'm going to just have a go at um, creating some stuff. I have some code snippets that I've played with um, already. And actually, at the bottom of um, at the bottom of um, my of this Miro board, there's some code snippets that I've gathered together of some things I'm going to look at right now. Um, but um, I'm just going to clear this all out. Um, and do so command shift enter and because there's nothing there it's just going to go what are you talking about Kevin um there's nothing here to go so um we, we're often bringing in sources from somewhere else and they could be um I, we can just do if I had a, so one of the things we have are oscillators OSC and they're exactly the kind of oscilloscope things that we're kind of seeing in the top of that image up here um which you probably remember from like your your science um um back at school um and the oscillator you know if we look over here and we go well what's an oscillator made up of well it takes a frequency a synth and a sync and an offset so I'll just stick in a frequency and see what happens and I say oh what nothing's happening and that's because I need to once I've done it I need to send it to the out and here I've got this oscillator it's kind of moving right to left and it's kind of black and white and okay that's interesting if I make it a hundred rather than ten well okay I've got like the frequencies increasing so there's more and before it gets to the out well I could rotate it and so I could say well let's rotate it by I don't know one what's that do like okay it's kind of going up there a wee bit and I could add some color um I don't know like um I can't even remember how color works really but let's have a go zero to oh that's almost Christmassy I don't know we're kind of getting some something in, in the mix there anyway um and and then with this I could start blending other things so say I did a dot blend and you can see this kind of looks I mean it's it, it's written in JavaScript in the background and you can see it's just really chaining methods together um so on different on different um objects so it's kind of it is javascript in the, in the mix here as well so i can blend together different os oscillators so i could get another oscilloscope that maybe has a frequency of 10 and you can kind of see it's going from left to right while the other one's going up and down and we're kind of playing it around and then maybe i could do like a kaleidoscope effect that's like dot collide see i can uh, i'm going to spell this one wrong and um, four maybe and you know it starts to get oh that's that's fun and that's, that's cool and 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 the dynamicness of it um really makes you go whoa um like that like for me it makes me feel super excited to kind of play with it and to explore it and to to kind of have a look um with other places and as i say you can you know you can do things like you can ra rather than um rather than sourcing it um you know i can i can um oh that didn't ask me for permission i wonder if that's previously because i've um I have dealt it. I can take the source from an external source like my camera and, and send that to out, but ooh, it's not asked me for permission. Yeah. Let's try in here. Oh. Okay. It's not asked, I was hoping to play with my camera. It could be Zoom misbehaving and saying and taking ownership of it. So instead of that, I'll get another image. So instead of my camera, I'm going to make my source zero to be an external image. There's Santa. Um, nothing more Christmassy than a bit of Santa. But with very little work, I can pixelate Santa. Um, and it's like, oh, oh, now it looks like Santa on a lineup. Um, and you know, like one of those fit the, the those um like uh like is he like a 
or uh, what was that crime program that used to be on BBC? Uh, one of those ones, anyway. And you can set, you can pass in variables if you wanted 100 by, uh, pixels by 100 pixels or 100 in one direction and 10 in the other. And you can start to play with that and then blend that together with, um, I don't know, um, some kind of, some other um, noise. So we could have some noise blended in the mix there. And, you know, Santa looks a bit crazy there. And actually, I want that noise to scroll a bit. And one, one uh, I'll just do one. So it's X, Y. Y and then how fast X and Y. Oh, it's really fast. Um, so, like, I guess what I what I'm hoping that I can sh I've shared with you is that live coding is a cool thing. Um, it exists. Um, it's written. We can interact with it in quite a JavaScript like syntax. So this is completely written in JavaScript. So that so if we we can do it with JavaScript, it's brilliant. Um, and like it's just it, we get getting this live feedback collaboratively. Um, we can there there are. Um, there are ways to where you can be sharing the same keyboard and um, adding to that same kind of experience, um, both visually and auditorily. So, like, um, I, I I was I was at a performance last month in in London. I was at a conference and and, and they had a performance there. And the one the performer um, was part of a group that you are only allowed to join it if you don't live less than 200 kilometers from someone else in the group and so the idea was you could get a global community that could then collaborate and work on these kinds of projects together but yeah that is a very very brief introduction to live coding um, and I think I made up the time that um, I think I probably went longer than I was supposed to sorry um, but um, hopefully that was um, fun and you can see where you could play with that yourself um, as you um, yeah if you want to join in with some live coding stuff. So thanks, I've been Kevin. Thank you. I'm mind, I'm mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> Double whammy. <laughs> I'm mind blown. Um, I think you a might have just changed Chris's life. B <laughs> 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 um, need to go to a code rave and see. I appreciate the mirror usage. I'll go raves. I'll go raves. So it's what they, yeah, they're, they're so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was very cool. Um, I think that the, the biggest thing that threw me off was like, whenever you messaged me with the tidy were like introduction to live coding, I thought you just meant like, no, coding live on uh, like a screen share or something like that. But that was complete left field. That was very, very cool. I didn't even know this, ex <laughs> this thing existed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, when if you Google live coding, or if you Google live coding, about half of it is people just like doing code streams like you and I doing our yeah. advent of code <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah, so this was, yeah, hopefully slightly more fun than that. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally, I'm still not uh, for a, a live stream at some point. Um, it was very cool. Um, yeah, so if anyone's got any questions, fire away in the chat or you can uh, unmute. Um, but I know I have a question anyway. <laughs> Everything that you're showing, it was like it was all uh, it done on the browser. Like, mm. is there like because if you're linking GitHub repos and stuff, is there like an ID or I'm, I'm guessing there's probably like a VS Code plugin or something for this? Um, yeah, like there's so many. So, um, like, and different parts of the the live coding sort of community have gone or. Or have different language routes. So one of the main sound ones is based in Ruby, um, and so a lot of the fun, a lot of the ways that that would the, the the syntax and the way of approaching that and writing functions and things is is written in Ruby. Um, this one, this although I'm doing this in the browser, um, it's absolutely you can host this locally, um, and see, and there's instructions in the repo for how to build that up and to be able to to do that in you know on your local machine. The joy of browsers is that you know you can share it and you know you can and the vs code side of things like you could do a live share or, or on inside vs code and then everyone could be editing the code and, and and doing it together as well so you know there's lots of lots of possibilities um and like, i guess this is just offering like the, there's a, like the, this giant box of suites that exists um and yeah feel free to like go and go go like and hopefully i've opened like made you aware of it so that you can go and sample those suites a bit more oh yeah definitely definitely <laughs> actually and i'm kind of following you're saying about like you know the vs code like sharing we also mentioned like about the people in the same radius and then like you could share the keyboard so is it mm -hmm. built to like you know have like you know pair programming if you could even call it so um so again th there's like 
there's as many implementations of live coding languages as there are kind of performers who enjoy who enjoy playing with it. So um, the, the, there are there are environments that are definitely set up for that for for collaborative in in particular. Um, oh, there was a I'm, I'll, I'll go to another screen, but there was a um, oh, I'm going to forget what it is. Um, th there was a I was at this conference on and I'll, I'll post it in this Zoom later. Um, I was at this conference last last month. I was mentioning, and one of the things we did was. Was, um, it was an, we we linked up her the the presenter's um, browser to to the um, sound system, and then twenty people could have their own code window um, on the same on her machine, and we're adding sound. So the music in the room was the tw twenty of the people in the room who were adding different beats or different modules or, or different were, were were designing. So it got a bit noisy, and oh, and then sometimes she would be like muting some things and go and maybe giving some advice to people, going oh maybe try this or or have here. So having a combination of just play with it. Um, and a library of snippets to kind of go, oh, this kind of thing sounds cool when you change this kind of thing can can make that kind of experience um, really powerful as well. So so maybe the ones the next live Belfast JSs, we should um, do a um, we should do a, a live version yeah. of this um, so that we can all make have a algo rave um, somewhere somewhere together in JS land. Although you say when you had twenty people joining and then it got loud i'm assuming loud is a nice way of saying terrible sounding well yeah I, well i think yeah definitely they got noisy you know it, it was like that gitter.cc thing i was saying before the first time i played with that it's just like ah you know it's like, it was like deafening but you know I, it's that kind of experimenting and like you you know oh that was my bit that made that noise i can fiddle that and you've got someone who's keeping an eye over it to go actually um bring the volume down of that one and so given some like code code advice about oh try this and i move that around as well and it's that kind of more hands on less didactic way of being able to just dive in and to go yeah this is fun um and actually learning about um, repeatable functions, learning about like arguments passed in, and uh, learning about uh, the different um, ways that you can even play with sound and, and modulate frequencies. That um, like for audio geeks or, or, or sitting with their with the wires and the knobs, that looks really cool to me, but completely inaccessible. Um, I was like, I don't really know how I would manage to put that all together. But I can type a function and I can put some variables in and I can whack those numbers around um, and find some kind of way through. Um, as another way in to like code um which actually outputs something tangible sound and light um in a very quick way without having to do too much work um i think is a really fun way to help people um not only create amazing art but also like appreciate that um the code is part of the art and that actually code can be creative and it's not just about um making marketing sites for um shampoo companies yeah, like I think it's really cool because even like I've I've experimented with like the web like audio synthesizer and mm -hmm. unless you know about music and you know about oscillators and all that kind of crack, you know, mm -hmm. it's very, you know, high learning curve and it's not really inclusive. And I was just, like, I managed to like import an MP3 and get it to play, and that was the height of it. Yeah. Um, but we, we a question came through there, but like, how do you handle like debugging and errors whenever you're playing about with this? Uh um, well, I guess it, it it sounds funny, right? So um, so I guess it, if I'm in the browser, you the, the for some of them they tend to have a pretty decent um um like logging tool of kind of all the things that are going on you can kind of start to get an idea of what's happening um as you're you're moving around so you do have objects that are being logged in this tool um when i'm in vs code i'll absolutely stick the debugger on and i'll you know i'll run and debug and then land at that right place to kind of get an idea but it tends to be a um oh it's not working ah uh, right let's fiddle with the numbers a bit and see if there's you know see if there's some some other way that um i can I can um I is there something else that um oh, uh I was trying to play, paste another bit of code. Um so that so if there's something else I can do to play, to explore, to to have and yeah. Um but what as I said, these functions the, the fact that all the functions have 
um, like uh, examples that are playable and interactive on the page. Like, it's just I feel like that's just another level of like great documentation as a user coming to learn something new. That makes me go, oh, I can do that. And like, what happens if I change this from zero point five to five point five? Did that do anything interesting? It's like, oh, it got too big, or yeah, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting kind of um, like. Um, uh, making making results really quick and shortening that feedback loop means that the debugging thing um, and the error thing is like oh well uh, it's okay I'll, I'll play with it a bit more and it's part of the it's part of the process rather than something to avoid or something to be scared of yeah I love how like this like niche coding kind of area everything has a live example where you go on to like react or angular or Vue and like these big well-known frameworks that are like bolstering like billion dollar companies and they don't have any of this kind of level of documentation no no yeah um yeah it's brilliant but yeah yeah awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you very much that was that thank was you. um an amazing talk um i will again pass it back 